Hey, Ron and Annie in the car, Doctor. I've got Danny on the camera. I've got Research Kathy in the truck. Say hi, Kat. Kathy's camera shy, so we, we just, we've got her on camera. She's got a big part of this in this video. So we've got this 2015 Toyota Tacoma. You're going to hear about this if it's after the fact on this Saturday's show, which is April 26, 2025. Um, so you can go back and reference this. I'm going to talk about this in hour one. All right. This vehicle has a fuel system problem. It's a dead fuel pump. Well, we just confirmed it's a fuel pump, and I'm going to show you how. But I want to talk specifically about how we came to this conclusion. Toyota does something unique by way of a mobilizer. They have an anti-theft circuit. It's a mobilizer fuel cut where it will, if it, if it thinks the wrong key has been inserted into the lock cylinder and turned, it won't allow the fuel pump to be activated. They also have engine fuel cut, which is a different form. Engine's running hot, engine's running incorrect. Engine's got some sort of a fault that they think will damage the engine beyond reasonable repair, so to speak. They put it in engine fuel cut. So we had to eliminate that as a possibility. Part of the problem was two of our aftermarket scan tools did not properly record fuel cut. They wouldn't update as we drove and operate or tried to drive and operate the vehicle. So it became very convoluted as the results. We ended up using Toyota factory software through our Opus IVS scan tool. You hear me talk about how it saves the day all the time, and it did. All right, and it gave us proper updates showing that fuel cut was not being applied as the other scan tools indicated. We then went, we had traced this out prior to that. We looked at, there's a, a, a fuel uh, pump resistor up front. We verified power on both legs of that. When the one scan tool said fuel cut, and I'll explain this more in the podcast if you're down there listening to it. So we knew it, we had power to the pump. Well, we've got the bed off. Danny, pull in. We've got the bed off. We had to pull the bed off the back of this because the fuel tank is so badly rusted in, we can't get it out. All right? And not to mention, it's full which I should have known it was a bad pump right away because we'll wait for the truck to go by. This is real in the shop, guys. We don't edit these things. Um, should have known it was a bad fuel pump because it's always bad when the tank is full, right? So we now have, we tested at the black red up front by the fuel pump resistor. We had power. That black red doubles back to the fuel pump relay and then goes back to the tank. We are tapped in my old standby, right? Uh, 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 just a round headlight to show electrical load. Kathy's going to cycle the key in a minute. Now watch, Kathy, just turn the key on. On, one more click. So we now have dash lights. Notice the light doesn't light up. That's kind of interesting. I never knew that about Toyota. I thought they would prime the pump. They do not. All right. Now crank it, Kath. All right. Keep going. Good. So... We've got power and ground. We're across the black red, and we're across the white, which is chassis ground back to the frame. I've proven that my electrical circuit will operate a fuel pump if it worked. 175,000 miles. We just wanted to be 100% sure because of some of the, you know, misinterpretations of data. So always be sure of what you're doing. Always find a way to test something, and once you're confident, replace the part. Hey, let's take a little sidebar from that Toyota Tacoma. Here's the wiring diagram. All right, let's look at the fuel pump relay. You see this black red coming out of pin four? You see how there's two black reds coming out of pin four? If we follow those down, all right, this one goes to the fuel pump, right? That's the hot lead leading up to the fuel pump. This one comes over here to the fuel pump resistor. During testing, and I mentioned this in the video, this black red had about 10 and a half, 10.8 volts cranking. The pump should run on that voltage. Ground was good. I've got, I'm assuming, and I'm going to check it, that I've got power here. So we come up, and this is where I was talking about when I realized the scan tool software was incorrect. If I've got hot on the black red and they're both coming out of the same pin, that means the fuel pump relay is closed because the circuit open relay is doing what it's supposed to do and the EFI main relay is doing what it's supposed to do. This should work. We should have a fuel pump operating. Um, so now I'm just going to verify that this black red is intact leading down to the pump. I'll verify power there. Well, actually, that's what you saw me do with the headlight, right? The headlight came on when Kathy cranked it. So uh, this car's got a bad fuel pump. But I wanted you to understand what led me to that because using the two scan tools told me that this was an immobilizer event, but it wasn't. Sometimes you have to diagnose against the tool and you, you just... You, there's no way to explain it. You just got to be able to recognize it when it happens. Let's get back to the video and see where we are. 
Well, if you didn't know by now, Danny and I are working on a 2015 Toyota Tacoma. We had to lift the bed. All right, we tied in some basic lift points using some sin straps, some bolts as pins, right? The overhead hoist came in handy. And we've got the bed up. We're just far enough. We had to get to the fuel pump, which was under there. All right, we've changed it. We're going to get the bed back on it, and then uh, we'll show you how we're going to... Um, that'll be final assembly. You saw us test this already, um, but I wanted you to see what it took. To, you know, we didn't talk about this prior. That Yeah, lifting the bed just made sense to us. It really was a lot simpler. The straps for the fuel pump were kind of rusted and beat up on this 175,000-mile 10-year-old truck. So uh, we thought we'd do it this way, and it worked out well. Um, just an alternative. I know everybody says, oh, drop the tank. Well, as I told you before, the tank is full. So lowering the tank gets a little dicey sometimes. This, this seemed to be a lot cleaner and safer. Um, anyway, let's get back and uh, let's finish this up. I'll see you soon. Did you miss this week's full broadcast of Ron and Nanny and the Car Doctor? Or maybe you want to hear certain parts of it all over again. Well, it's easy to do. Once the show airs, it then becomes a podcast. You can find it through all major podcast players and media, iHeartMedia, Google, Amazon Music, Spotify, and so much more. Use your favorite search engine and ask for Ron and Anian Podcast. Watch what happens next. Need more Ron? That's okay. Look for Ron and Anian, available via podcast, wherever podcasts are found.